Alright. Yeah, we were all ready to put the, the crankshaft in this, uh, the engine and put it all together and everything. And then uh, I got the, the flywheels we're going to use and, and started looking at them and seeing some things that, that maybe we could uh, make a few changes to make, make it a little better. I know I'd, I just fixed this crankshaft here. You know, I, I fixed that little hole that was in there. But uh, all right, let's take a look at these flywheels first before we go back to that. They're, they're not identical, but they're so close that we can make them look pretty good, you know. Almost like identical twins, you know. Identical twins aren't identical, you know. There's always something different. And with these two, they're the same diameter, you know, but the, the spokes look a little different. These have ribs and a little ridge on the edge. And I can, I can cut that away, and then they'll look pretty good. And the spokes themselves are lined up perfectly, you know, I mean, they look the same. This one, has, these have a little more shape than this, you know, but that's no problem. And uh, they uh, pretty much uh, weigh the same. They're not much different. Let's put them on a scale here. Is there right out here? Can you see that? You got an awful lot of glare, don't you? Well, it's not glare, it just went off. Alright, counting down. Alright, we're good to go. Alright, put it on there. Okay, this, uh, this pulley here is uh, five, almost five pounds. Or it is five pounds and uh, 0 0.5 ounces. Alright, let's look at the other one here. This one here is uh, five pounds, six ounces. So I'm figuring if we cut these off, these little ribs on both sides, and uh, let me put you in a tripod and I'll show you something else. All right. Yeah, before I put you up there, ladies, ladies over here, to get an identical set of flywheels is very difficult. You know, you you very rarely find them, even with this engine over here. You know, we got these, and these are identical, but these, these aren't flywheels or pulleys or nothing. I think these were hand wheels, you know, for uh, water pipes or something. But, but it's so difficult to get a match set, you gotta, you got to deal with what you can. And that's what we're going to do here. We're going we're gonna to make them look good at a glance. Okay. Like I said, right now, these, one is heavier than the other. But also, one is also thicker than the other. Let me see if you can see that. You probably can't see it that well, but uh, one's almost a quarter of an inch thicker than the other. But the one that's thicker also has this outside ridge on it. So uh, we can take that ridge off on both sides and take the ribs off. And these two, these two flywheels probably be almost identical in weight, so that's no problem. But uh, here's another problem we're running into. This one here has a 5 8 hole in it and the shaft is a, a half inch you know so if, if you put a bushing in there that's no problem let me put it in this side here there we go see if you put a bushing in there that'll fit right on the shaft so I was talking to Mike and I says well how about if I make a, a steel bushing because it's a brass one I said how about we make a steel bushing and, and weld it in there and uh, Make the, make the keyway and everything, and everything would be cool. And he came up with the idea of why not clad welding this and bringing this shaft up to a 5 8 shaft, and then uh, we can cut the we can cut a 3 16 uh, keyway in that, and that's even a better idea, you know. So that that eliminates a whole lot of future problems. So that's what I'm going to do. And even on this side here, this shaft is tapered. But this this hole is actually tapered, and this this shaft is tapered. So I told Mike, I says uh, he's better at tapering and stuff like that on a lathe than I am. I says, can you taper that shaft down so that'll fit? And he said, yeah. And then he looked at it, and if he did that, there would be very little meat left because there's not much meat on here to begin with. So then he came with the idea because he put the put that in there and seen the hole. And he said, uh, how about we just drill it straight through, make it a straight 
I don't know what that is. That's probably make make a five eighths hole, and then just cut the shaft down to flat five eighths around there. Put a keyway in there because we don't we don't need a taper shaft. You know that was for the, the magneto and stuff. So that's the plan on that. So I could I could fit this in there and uh, cut that down and everything, but I can't fit this in my lathe to to cut this edge down. So I'm gonna have Mike take this home and cut that edge down. And while he has it, I said, well, "Why you got him? Why don't you just cut the the shaft on this side?" So that's my plan. So uh, if you guys want to hang around and watch me do that, fine. But if uh, if you're not interested in that, no worries. All right, let me get this ready. We'll, we'll clad weld this. Bring this out to five eighths. All right. Okay. It shouldn't take maybe a year. When we clad weld it, maybe one pass all the way around complete. Because if you look at this bushing, the inside diameter is what the shaft is now. It's half inch. And the outside is where we're going. You know, so it's, it's, it's very thin. So it's not going to take much. And what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to take some tape here. And I'm going to wrap it around this part of the shaft. And it will serve two purposes. That way, that's that's where the barren and the, and the seal is. So if I tape it up, if there's any splatter, it, it will protect the shaft. Plus, it'll also uh, prevent it from grounding out. So if I do touch it with with the tip, you know, it won't be able to weld or won't be able to uh, penetrate it. So it's probably going to get hot enough and melt some of the glue on the tape. So it's it's easy enough to clean off, but. Uh, just a little preventative measures there. Now let me tape it up and we'll put it in invoice. Alright, we got it taped up and I just washed it down with lacquer finish so everything is clean here. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to run maybe maybe two beads around here. That way I can stay away from there. And then, I'm, and then I'll run some beads uh, lengthwise here and finish that up. Like I say, it shouldn't, shouldn't take maybe uh, one pass, but if it takes, if it takes two, that's fine. Alright. Alright, yeah, it pretty much looks like hell right now, but uh, I'm going to put it on the lathe and uh, cut it down to uh, maybe 11 sixteenths and see if there are any little voids and then I can fill them in and then, then we can bring it back down to 5 eighths. So. I'm going to throw it on the lathe and see what it can do with it. Alright, moved you over here to the lathe. Like I say, it looks like hell now, but uh, give me a few minutes and uh, it should start looking like something. Alright, alright, yeah, we cut a lot down and it's looking pretty good. This one side looks good all the way through. Same with this side here. This looks good. There's a little tiny pothole there, but not, not much. But what, uh, what's good is back here, up against where the bearing goes, it's all pretty much filled in, so I don't have to mess with that. I just have to fill this in a little bit. And uh, we got it down to about uh, 0.7. We want to get down to about 0.68. And then uh, I'll fill that in a little bit, and, and we'll come back, and hopefully uh, we can uh, finish it up. It's fun to watch something that looks like garbage, you know, it looks like you completely screwed it up. And then when you start machining it down, right now it's a rough cut, so it looks bad, but it's fun to, to watch it just come down and uh, start looking back normal again. All right, let me cut a little bit more. All right, we got it down to uh, 0 0.66. Four zero. So uh, our final destination is 0 0.625. So we're still okay. So I'm gonna take this off and uh, fill these little gaps in. Actually, they don't feel that deep at all. They look they look deep, but they're not. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna fill in little gaps in, and then we'll bring it back. All right. I filled in all in voids, and it looks pretty gnarly again. But uh, 15 minutes will look pretty good. All right. Yeah, we cut it down a little more. It's uh, looking a lot better. I do have to, uh, there's a tiny little spot right here i got to fill in. And that's it. I do have tiny little nicks here, but I think when we get down to the final cut, it's going to get them out because they're, they're more scratches than anything. There's a little tiny little neck here, but uh, yeah, what it does, I, I, I put some magic mark on the back here, so when I uh, cut it down, as soon as I see it hit that black mark, I knew I was right where I needed to be. So, uh, alright, let's... Uh, Let's fill that weld in a little bit and uh, we'll bring it back and cut it down to where it should be. Alright. Watch your sleeves. Should be it. Yeah. 
six. I don't know if you guys can see that. Oh, yeah. 0.6255. I think that's going to be good enough. Because then pulleys, uh, then pulleys aren't all that uh, precise anyway. But uh, uh, what I'm going to do now is uh, this off here. Get this out of the way. And uh, round the end off there. Alright, let me get let me get a file. Alright, face this off now I'm just uh watch your sleeves, watch your sleeves. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, when I cut this, I use this uh tail shaft and it makes a difference because you can see the a tiny bit of wobble when uh, when I don't have that on there but uh, this is a, this is a 5 8 bushing and that, uh, that fits nice it goes on easy but there's really no side play or nothing so I'm happy with it happy with it all right let's take it out and go over to the table and see what it looks like all right I like this wheel here and it's uh, so I don't even think it's round. We get the 637, 0.637, and then some, some places, 630, yeah, 630. So, so I knew it was going to be be loose because that's you know these these aren't precision, you know they're just uh, besides being old. So it fits on there, you know it's a little play, but. Uh, when I cut that that keyway in there, and, and we're gonna put a, a gib key in there, a gib key is like a tapered uh, pin that goes in there. That'll tighten everything up, so so it'll be okay. There's no problems. All right, I guess the next thing I do is uh, we'll cut a, a shaft in this and uh, see how everything works. All right, enough of this.